Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Founders Connect. Here, I have conversations with entrepreneurs of leading African companies. Um, not just entrepreneurs anymore, right? Now we're doing also operators. So basically, anybody who is building or leading a tech startup or a tech business in Nigeria. Um, the last couple of videos I've done, right? I've tried to like do things that differently, and this one is also one of them. So I'm having a conversation with two people today, um, and what is very interesting to look forward to this video is understanding that these two people are joint CEOs, which is something that is very rare in Nigeria, probably across Africa. You don't see a lot of co-CEOs, and so we're going to learn how this decision came about and how they are managing, leading equally a company. And also one of the founders also is a co-founder of another company. So it's very interesting to learn, hey, you're a co-CEO, but you're also building another product, right? So today, the people I'm talking about is Ibo Kun and Timmy Tokwe of Printivo. Hi. Hi, how guys. Hi, how are you? Please? Hi, please. I'm fine, thank you. It's good to meet both of you and to like, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Man, here we are. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> let's get right into it. Hey folks, you're yeah, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is PC Timmy. I'm very passionate about growing people and growing businesses and the content I create is a reflection of that. On this channel, you'll find everything from marketing videos to videos about life, entrepreneurship, etc. Now, this video, this episode of Founders Connect is done in collaboration with Africa Verified. Now, Africa Verified is a media platform that seeks out and amplifies factual stories from reputable and trustworthy news sources. Africa Verified covers news from global issues to domestic issues to business, entrepreneurship, basically everything that affects Africa and its people. And you know what? Founders Connect is about entrepreneurship in Africa. It's almost a match made in heaven. Anyway, make sure you stay and watch this video to the end and subscribe to my channel afterwards. Okay, so it's interesting. I'm not sure who to start with. Let me start with Ibukun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Why starting with Ibukun though? Uh, let me, let me, I think the story let me starts. Let readjust my, st my seat. So yes, please. I, I think uh, the story starts with you, right? Um, you co founded Printivo with Uluyomi. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Like, how did the idea come about? How did you meet him? Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that will bring me back to, I mean, talking a bit about my background, yes, right? Um, I started this entire career way back 2006 i mean six when i moved into lagos yeah right <laughs> when i moved into lagos from one passing by town in ocean state right um i've been a printer from being an, a printing intern in 2006 then 2008 i was working in computer village as a computer engineer then i met yomi i actually am i was actually his engineer computer right. engineer so one of these days, he, he brought the laptop to me and like, oh, guy, I want to format my laptop, but do me a favor, back up this information on one hard drive, then I have, I have this hard drive then as a computer engineer, software engineer, and stuff like that. In computer village too, not the tech, <laughs> <laughs> not the web developers, yes. right? <laughs> so as I was backing up the data, I realized that this guy has lot, loads of design on his laptop. And I was like, I approached him and like, Man, are you a designer? He said, yeah, he's a designer. Oh, I'm also a printer. If you don't mind, we can work together. The guy looked at me like, I'm like, you, this computer village guy. I don't think, I don't think I have anything to do with you. But he made a mistake that day. <laughs> he made a mistake of giving me his contacts. Right. <laughs> so I called the hell out of him like, bro, I'm actually interested in learning this thing. I'm a printer. I know how print works. Right. But I want to learn the design part of it. He was in Ladoki, I think, Lautech, yeah. University of Technology. Then, I think it was in his final year. So, the moment he was done, he, he, he got an office around Allen Avenue. He, he, it's a garage, garage converted to. <laughs> <laughs> converted to. Yeah, that. right? It's a, it was a garage converted into an office. Then I called him because I won't stop calling him. <laughs> then I called him and I'm like, oh, this guy again. Okay, you know what? Are you in computer village right now? And I said, yes, I don't have another work. He said, okay, come into my office. Let me even see. Me. Let me, yeah, let me see you. Let me know the experience you have about printing. Then he started like a short interview, like, okay, what's this type of card called? What's this type of card called? And I was like, okay, this is um, art card. This is art card. This is Manila. This is matte lamination, spot lamination. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. But I'm still not sure if you want to leave computer village to come and be an intern under me. 
Right. <laughs> you get it. He wasn't sure. So one of these days, because everything work, every good, every bad thing work. I mean, I have a good opportunity. So you have someone in my position then that does all the running around for printing and stuff like that. So the guy disappointed him. Mm. <laughs> the guy stole him money and ran away. So he had no other option than to call me and say, IBK, where are you? I was like, oh, I'm in a computer village as usual, right? He said, okay, I'm coming towards Ikeja Express, like Ikeja Long Express. Can you meet me at, I mean, on the Express, on the other side of the Express? Then we go to Shomolu together. So I ran my interview inside the car before we get to Shomolu and I resume. <laughs> Shomolu <laughs> that same day, right? So then from there, I was able to, I mean, because of my printing background, background I was able to learn this Corel Draw Photoshop, of right. thing. like I was able to move faster from being an intern to the position of an art director and mm. I'm also the production guy because whatever I design, I have to take it to Shomolu to oh, print, geez. then from printing it, I have to take it to customer to deliver. So I was like, so you did. <laughs> all of so, these yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was getting the brief from clients, design, the production, then the delivery. Then delivery. So I was doing all that. And yeah, it got to a point that I won't have to go home from Monday until Saturday morning. Wow. Yes, your meal was part of us too. In that small room, <laughs> eh? <laughs> there was a black rock in that room that everybody slept <laughs> back then. So when the dream of uh, Printivo came up, Yomi was like, at first I didn't believe in the dream, let me be. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, because it was a crazy at idea time, back then in 2013. Really, really crazy. Right? So he was like, oh, I think we need to, oh, because the idea was, we had this issue solving print, I mean print uh, problem, yeah, error. print yeah. error from customer to, like getting your prints done from Right. Those it was brick harder. and mortar guys in Shomolu it was very, was very hard. Mm -hmm. So we had this idea of okay, we need to set up our own printing firm mm -hmm. to solve our problem. So why thinking that? Why I mean thinking about that? An idea came like okay, you are trying to set up a printing firm to solve your own problem. Do you know how many people have the people same have the same problem? Why not open it up to others like an opportunity? You get so we said okay. Uh, let's start. We started the, I mean, the business mm -hmm. planning, the registration, the this thing. Then Yomi happened to travel out to study digital marketing in the UK. Then, then I think he met someone who has this experience about online printing firm. Then Yomi came back to Nigeria and said, "IBK, we are taking We're this changing. <laughs> We are changing this plan. We are taking it online." I was okay. like, "Oh, guy, can we not just try this? <laughs> like, <laughs> online?" No, like people don't even trust us enough. Like right. if I want to order shoes or something from online, after I that choose, time. Yeah, yeah, after that yeah. time, 2013, I choose pay on delivery. Yes, no, because yeah. I they don't have to trust sure you. you. So why would people trust us to swipe their card? Yomi was like, okay, we'll start with pay on delivery. If you don't trust us, when we deliver your job to you, then you give us. You you pay us, or if the job didn't meet your expectation. You, refund, you return it, then we reprint for you. So the first year was a lot of reprints, reprint, even the jobs that come still pass, right? The customer will be like, okay, since I have not paid, please Might as well, yeah. take it and just leave. So I was like, okay, you know what? Let's 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 start this. Then we started the uh, our first website. It was actually designed by two guys from Israel, right? All the way. <laughs> All yeah. the way. Because no Nigeria developer has tried this. Or even knew mm. what it was back then, or knew what it was. Nothing like web to print, like yeah. it's not it's not existing back then, right? So those guys were like, oh, we have someone somewhere in Africa too with this kind of idea that we are working with. Okay, but it was a lot of wahala. It was a lot of back and forth for us because if there was a problem on the website that need to fix, we have to wait for them to to when they wake up before we can do that. And our first website was designed by, I mean, all our first templates was designed by all the designers yeah. in the team back then, yeah. in that advertising agency called Obambis. They are now Allo Creative. The company is still existing, by the way. Now Allo Creative was designed by everybody there. So we launched January 1st, 1st. 2014, unofficially. Yeah. 
on otherwise it was unofficial. So because things. we're still at the texting phase. Right. Like, 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 had you had you joined them? No, not yet. He Wait. has been he has he has actually been a member of the team from, from the background. So give, before give me that story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the funniest thing was um I was in the UK and mm. I was studying so more like I went for a master's and I was helping the university come into Nigeria. That was the University right. of Sussex. And so part of the business planning was, okay, how do they come? And as I was just going to register to help start my consultancy firm, um, mm -hmm. I decided to look for a printer. So I was using the printing online service in the UK and I was looking for something similar. <laughs> and I ordered, I saw a website, it was just a random search and I saw print evil and I decided to order mm -hmm. and then the delivery was made like literally 24 mm -hmm. hours and I loved it I was like I must be part of this oh <laughs> that was it I just ended like I must be part of this business and so I called I just told the dispatch who is your like who is your boss mm -hmm. it's like you're me I went online I was searching found online it. then I now found him on Twitter and then I was just following his thoughts. We were just chatting. Then I slid, slid into his DM. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, Yomi, I want to be part of this company. Mm. I don't know how, but I want to be. So it's more like going back to shooting the shot. It was like, I said, I'm young, I agree. But I know I have, like, in terms of my, what I've done, in terms of experience, in terms of building businesses, I've built two businesses before then. So, right. so it's not the about the age, I can do this for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I remember then coming to, you know, said, okay, let me come up to Nigeria. Like, you're coming from the UK, I don't think you'll be able to blend. I'm like, I'm ready to get my hand dirty. Let me come. And so I think when I met Ibukun and um, Yomi, it was more like, can this guy go? <laughs> I think I think he was skeptical. Like I you're just coming from the UK, you have that. I just got back mentality. Will you be able to cope in a traditional area? And I just smiled. I was like, let's see, right? And the energy was crazy. I mean, in the small cramped room, we we're planning how to to print. And I won't forget the very first order we had. It was a journalist that was co coming, and she just asked. She needed a business card. And we just told that we can get it done. And in hours, we delivered that. I mean, me and him went to go and make that delivery. And she was shocked. And so she tweeted about it that this works. Mm. And immediately we had 100 dollars. I think she was trying to leave the country. Country. Right? And she needed it urgently. So yeah, where can I get was, this card done? I'm going for it. It was 100 orders coming immediately after that. And then from there, it just said, people started telling people this works, this works. But it meant all of us changing gears because again it was a test like you said unofficially mm. and we were planning this i was working on how do we go about delivery if you look at 2013 it was the nascent time of everything, everything internet delivery. logistics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so when you are speaking to the logistics driver me i'm coming from that mindset let's do route planning let's do this let's do that they're looking at me like what am i saying Google Maps was uh, because I was a Google map maker mm. and so I, I was very involved in Google community. I was now bringing stuff. Let's start routing Google Maps and uh, like they were looking like I was saying something very off. Yeah, because and I was sorry like, to cut you because we <laughs> we started this business, we bought two bikes. I mean one bike. Mm. Uh, okay, this guy would do our delivery, then we had um, one bus. Sienna bus. Anybody can drive that Sienna then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody can be a delivery everybody, guy. Everybody. Get, and so literally all of us were delivery people. Everybody was delivering. So whenever it's, I mean, we had a job that is more than the size of the box, like the dispatch box. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it came off with like, like, okay, you don't you think we need to start outsourcing some of this? And I'm like, outsourcing our delivery, outsourcing this. And I'm like, this guy has come with this uh, IDJB mentality. What's all this now? <laughs> <laughs> I felt it was, it was more efficient than because for the time we, we leave, like the other orders are waiting and it's just us running mm -hmm. around. There's no time for us to sit down and plan. So I said, let's go find a dispatch rider to just handle or dispatch company to handle this. Again, felt, you know, things were good. I sat down. I think I spoke to literally every dispatch company we actually that was in Lagos. We actually disobeyed him at first. <laughs> So we went to buy a new bike to make and our I dispatch rider twice. Two, I mean, instead of one dispatch rider then outsource the rest, we went to buy another bike, bike. to make it two dispatch company. I mean, two dispatch uh, drivers. Drivers. drivers 
and two problem. <laughs> so yeah, I think <laughs> when, they, when they noticed then. that it was now becoming a problem. So the funniest thing about this part, and I think again, it's the same thing that happening was, as at that time, it was just a lot of people not trained. So you yeah. had road drivers, mm -hmm. you had you had them doing what they wanted to do. It yeah. was just like you gave them bike and it was just haggard. So the, the final draw was when we had a dispatch rider for an order in Ikoi. He left at 9, 9 a.m. to go deliver. As at 4, the client had called. He had not received his order that like 9 a.m., 4 p.m. Are you? One what order. You like, what's going on? And so we started looking for this guy. Like, where is he? And then we found him in a booker. <laughs> okay, I can't even forget because I was like, what is this? I, I, was, I was like, what is going on? Like, you know, that was the end. It's like, we must, we must tackle this thing. We have to find. So at what point different. did you guys yeah. move from being this scrappy to now being like a, more of a tech startup that sort of had everything together? So I would say when we decided, um, you know, with all these problems, we just decided to make that decision. We all had the conversation like, I mean, for us to ease this burden, um, we would just definitely have to do something different. So the first question was, outsource tech, bring everything home. We are going to hire, um, we are going to hire developers. And interestingly, so at that time we started making friends. I was still making friends from Conga friends mm -hmm. in, that were already in the e-commerce yeah, space. Yeah. They were already building, so they were still young and new. But, but they had the experience. But they had yeah. an experience of building an e-commerce website, and so we said, you know what, guys, come in. So we had quite the people who built the very first version of our site are literally most of the leaders you know today. Um, from Paystack to Conga, Conga, most of them were. At that time, we were still just young devs, but we we're all working on this, and it was a challenge for them. So that to like a practical for them, and too. it was just let's fix let's this see. thing. And so it was thousands of people because we started talking to people like we are going to build this, and no going back. Um, we ended the contract with the Israel guys, so it was just we we're fixing the problem on the fly. So we mm. were literally building and. Seriously. Our customers were changing things on the fly, and there was no time to. So it was like we rolled out an MVP, and people were just using that continually. So while that was going fine, we started receiving orders on the back end. The next thing was how to fulfill, and so this was the genius on fulfillment. And right, it was him starting training most of these people who were not like on the street. Literally, called them in. Do you want to work? and start training them how to use these machines that I felt they were just big contraption. I didn't even know what it meant. And how to use computers, right? Because then start training them how to use the systems and how to channel joys, how to lay them, how to design them for print. So we started moving from that scrappy to a proper technology driven right. operation and then started using tools that would guide how we move things across the system. So when an order comes in, when it moves to the next process, we all get that notification. So imagine right. and wherever we are, we stay you know. knowing where orders were. So things stay changing, stay adding costs to my support. So we stay just building the business li by little in different fronts, all right? Yomi was the marketing guy running around, getting orders. And so it, the business stay like it was growing in front of our eyes and growing really rapidly and yeah so i think one of those things is from where we were was like if we wanted to fail the earliest time to fail was then because we had i would give or take almost 500 requests that your order your product is shitty your product is mm -hmm. shitty and then from then we Everything we did was learning on yeah. the board. Practically, so we built what they call customer happiness co coefficient, which was again still unique, which is our own way to organize how customers are happy, and we score it, and we set a benchmark of ninety six percent. And so I think from all this weaving or maybe the insult and all that, we just had this fun like yeah. we should never let customers. Mm -hmm feel bad in principle and it's stuck and i think since 2014 to today it's the same guiding principle of under promise over deliver customer first do everything possible 
to just please the customer. Like there are things we have done that literally is crazy. And Yomi has written about that, chasing, running on the tarmac at 2 a.m. to go deliver it to the <laughs> customer, right? All these um, things, but we've decided that it's a principle, it's a guiding thing that we want our customers to yeah. love what we do and yeah. keep coming back. Yeah. Exactly. So in the last eight years now, right? Yes. Seven, seven eight years? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ibuku, what would you say IBK? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. What would you say has been like the, the biggest business lesson? I mean, you talk about your background and coming from somewhere in Osho. Okay, and so... being a computer village guy and now you're mm -hmm. like CEO of a tech startup. So like, what has been like the biggest lessons for you so far? So if I should explain that in one word, I would say never stop learning. Mm. Because there was a time, I think, um, I wanted to chip in when it was, I mean, when it was about to make something last yeah. time, I just said, like, okay, let me. There was a time, I feel like giving up. I think around that 2014, because we weren't getting anything right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was back to bus, bus at the, at the Oh point, my God. <laughs> Twitter, I think Instagram Full wasn't lines. this, I mean, functioning yeah. like then. I mean, back then, right? We weren't getting anything right. You printed a business card, and before you, the business card gets to the customer, the, I mean, the laminate you need to already fits off. Like, <laughs> what the hell? Then we started, I mean, then we made another, I mean, we try adding more machines to what we have, right? Which is like, you know, the more you get machines, some of these machines um, have to be operated by two, three, four staffs, right? And we're like, okay, you know what? Let's. Let's let's put money into our production, right? Instead of us managing the uh, outsourcing guys, mm -hmm. let's put this money into the operation. So we we we, we raised some amount after one year of uh, bootstrapping, and we started getting this machine. Yes, it was a good lesson. So for was that us. like VC money? Yeah. Yes, VC. So it was it was a good move for us back then. Before we realized now, it was a good move for us because we were able to control our quality mm. and stuff like that. So um, when you say biggest lesson, it's not giving up and don't stop learning. Because if I'm giving up, like you know, you mean I want to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> this won't be happening today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I've pulled out, then this won't be happening today. I'm like you know what? As against me pulling out, why not learn? how to correct all this mistake and how to, I mean, the, the, the bad product, why not trying to redeem your image, make it a good product. And there's one thing we had back then, no matter what the error on your business is, you right? We'll take it from you and mm. we'll replace Customers it. Customers are always so, first. Yeah, customer always first. So we've built customer trust and satisfaction from there. Mm. And that's another thing. I think I've mentioned about three things now. <laughs> yeah. Don't stop, don't stop learning. I mean, customer first, build customer satisfaction, and don't Never give up. Never give up. And don't give up. Don't give up. Amazing. I think that's from is not from I always think. learning and never giving up. You guys have gone from oh, we are just co-founders, head of growth, um, COO to joint CEOs, right? Yeah. So, can you give us like a little bit context of how that decision came about, like? I mean, most people would just like take one person and you be the CEO and maybe you will now be like COO. So mm -hmm. um, why the two of you, right? And how have you guys been handled? So you can say why and you can just talk about like the, the how you guys are managing it and how like decisions and splits. Okay, I think I'll have to go first. <laughs> first on that. Because um, you see, this role of CEO is not so much... I think, it, and I think it's a bit overrated too. Right. <laughs> right? Because uh, um, from my own background, I was the art director, like the yeah. design guy at the point. Yeah. Then from there, I match production to mm -hmm. what I do mm -hmm. before becoming the head yeah, of operation. Yeah, at some point, the delivery guy. You get <laughs> Before becoming the head of operation, now we are co-CEOs. So when the idea of uh, Yomi is... I mean, Yomi is leaving and dropping this title, not literally leaving, right? Yeah. Because it's now part of the board. Of the, I mean, it's not part of the board, right? It just moves like yeah. higher, right? No, Yami, Yami was like, you and Ekundayo will be the co-CEO. I'm like, okay, co-CEO. There are some things I don't know that Ekundayo knows. Mm. Like, I won't lie to you, like, you know, managing investors, marketing, 
I don't know much about it, but I'm very I'm just very good with the internal the inter right. you get things. the internal operation, managing funds and stuff like that. And you said that is where you guys have to be the co CEO. <laughs> <That> <laughs> you will be sense. the co CEO operation. You will be the CEO business development. Right. Yeah, like, he so actually he, moved from being a marketer to business development. Now we are both co CEOs. Right. So it's it's like a it gradual just balances. process. Yeah, yeah. balance. So I, I think you want to say the, something? Yeah, I mean yes. the whole point is complementary. Yin yang, right? So for me it's always been my part of things has always focused. I think I'd never like to do one thing. Mm. Um, if there's anybody that knows me, um, that's one thing they know about me. I'm always doing quite a lot. So first thing is I, I build the entire business end of the entire company. Mm. Um, and that's one person r running thousands of co clients and mm. then moving to call center, build that, then ha helped in operations, then went into marketing, then did business development, then did sales. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> at the point of time, it was just about how can I, and I was always hungry of, to do something new. And I think for me, mm. that's the challenge of I want to do something very different. And then I took on growth. Then it was new. It's still a new still thing. Still a new thing. But then I'm just, so I think also the learning thing is also very important for me. I, um, and so, complementing side of the day to day, right? While I still enjoy it, but I think he's more suited for that than me. Right. Because like there are a lot of temperaments and things he does that can handle those little bitty that for me you know, sir, if I it's don't. You, I just I, like, I I'm very like let's I can yeah. want to run like one million miles in two seconds. So it's the word impossible. Yes, I don't <laughs> believe that. So like we've done so many impossible things in this life and throughout my short life on earth that I feel when someone mm -hmm. tells me it's impossible, I lose it really? because we can do it and it's only your mindset. If you say it cannot be done, then you cannot be done. So it's more of a yin yang thing. So yeah, that makes sense. And and I think for from everyone it's about growth, right? In the company, whether you like it or not, you would evolve. So new new management, but I mean same old business. Mm. Same old customers to so to solve their problem but so, so yeah. um, IBK, my last question for you, right? Um, okay. Kundaya said new management, right? Um, what is what are you guys looking to bring, right? You say same old business, same old customers, but assume that now that there's a mantle, you're like, okay, we probably want to do things differently. Not just like, same old customers, though. We are bringing in some new customers, new customers as well. Of course. <laughs> yeah, so, so tell us about like what, what we're expecting from okay. the now. Okay, so... Um, the vision has not changed. The vision mm -hmm. is to, I mean, take over the print market in Africa and be the, and stick in people's minds. Like, whenever you talk about print, what comes to your mind first? Print evil. Mm -hmm. Print evil. You get it. We, 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 there, there's a slang we had back then, like, oh, we want to, we want to, I mean, we want to be able to play with, no, don't let me use the word play with people's <laughs> minds. <laughs> but we want to be able to stick with people's mind that uh, print evil will become a slang. Mm. Oh, let's print evil your business card for you. Right. Let's print evil your book. Let's print evil this. Let's print evil that. We want that name to stick across Africa. So what we are looking at now is number one thing is we are, I mean, expanding our market. We are looking into other markets. We are looking into South Africa, Kenya, and so on. Starting from Africa because yeah. the vision is not to just be here. You get just to be in Nigeria. I mean, other African markets. And another thing we are, we've added to the platform is still a work in progress. Ebonayo is leading it. Is um, we have this uh, printers. Uh, what do you call it again? <laughs> so it's it's printers. Portal. I mean, no printers. Uh, what do you call it? Basically. Marketplace where we outsource all our right. stuff to. Just like um, you order something from Amazon or any other e-commerce. Amazon doesn't necessarily to have all those have things. Always. So as against if you're ordering from Abuja, as against printing in Lagos and ship to Abuja, a printer can just pick up in okay. Abuja and print it. And so we are going to be the platform for all the printers, which so, is what we are working on. Yeah. And it will be launched very soon. And that's one. And we also have something called um, the marketplace for the designers. Like I said earlier, our first template was designed by us. Yeah. But now that I'm the, I was the head of operation and now I'm the CEO of operation, I don't think I have that time. 
to, to start design. designing templates, right? So we throw it open to the designers, to the creatives, basically. creatives, basically. Like, you know what? Create templates, put it on Printivo. Whenever a customer make use of your template, you get 15% right. royalty right. of that. So all the, I mean, templates you see on our website today is not, was not created by Printivo, but by the designer. Amazing. So what I'm hearing yes. is a lot of innovation. Innovation, in what yeah. the product currently is and mm -hmm. market expansion. Yeah. yeah. And we are also, I mean, also the, we are also, <laughs> we are also setting up another, I mean, product entirely, which will be focused on gift item. Echo Nayo will have to yeah. leave that because he's the leader of that <laughs> platform. So, so well, um, <laughs> you, you I have think more to say about for it. For us, is very crazily focused on creatives. I mean, it's how we started, so it's more like going back to the roots, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to build a tool for creatives. Um, of course, I'll still keep it on the wrap, okay. <laughs> but um, it's going to be amazing because we definitely have sat down with most of the leading creatives today, picking up what their pain point is, and it's the product I've been working for most two years, right. um, yeah. fully building. And so when we launch by end by November, then we know that you've been working you, on it for two you years. would understand why you've been working <laughs> for it for two years and. I just want to say, just keep your eye on Printivo. We are coming hot. Amazing. And I think we'll just wrap up on Printivo by saying that the two things that people should expect is it's new management, it's a lot of innovation and lots of expansion. So it's like, Printivo is like the kings of anything print in Nigeria, oh, but yes. like you've just started, literally. We, I will tell you very soon, like we never see ourselves as kings, but like working hard in hand with uh, creatives to just bring their awesome. ideas into awesome. life, basically. Amazing. And so, keep on innovating. And yeah. keep on innovating. Yeah. Awesome. Second, so, you're not just CEO in a principle. Oh, you're co-founder co in also. I'm going to suffer on that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, I get equity. Yeah. Um, what, what's, how did you guys decide that, you know what, I want to VC angel funds is becoming a thing in the ecosystem now, right? You just like a couple of people are reading an angel fund, um, or somebody has raised another millions of dollars to invest in startups. But then two guys are like, you know what? No, we don't want to raise a big fund. We want to sort of democratize it. Like, where did that inspiration come from? Um, and what can you tell us about how you guys are building and have launched Get Everything? All right. So interestingly, right um, during the lockdown, it was. A whole lot of things whereby a lot of business faced shutdowns and so you know when i was speaking to a lot of my friends who had different startups a lot of people complaining oh we're trying to raise money most VCs have ghosted on us and things are bad some of them had to shut down their businesses so being around a lot of people trying to be their support system and give them like because it's more like I've been there. Mm -hmm. The great is just don't give up. And when people say don't don't give up, it's more about finding unique ways to keep going forward. And so we know this, like, if we're going to actually change the face of how we grow our businesses, we need more founder-led capital mm -hmm. coming into the business. Because again, founders have been there. They mm -hmm. know the highs at the lows. And we decided Let's start a new kind of, what do you call it, VC, <laughs> that helps, right, Ac allow people, ordinary people who are in the tech system to invest in other amazing tech ideas. And so, as at the time, again, it was a funny idea, it was me and Jude, and we then got into an accelerator, Moxilla, that was their very first accelerator. Mm -hmm. And so we were being coached by, interestingly, um, IMDB, um, the founder, and we thought about, you know what? The first way to let people know if this will make sense is just to launch it. Right. No matter how crazy it is, let us just launch it and see if people would even accept that maybe we, we go do something else, <laughs> right? And so we just, first we were also pitching to other VCs. And so of course the reactions like two guys away from the VC ecosystem, what? But we are like, look, we've started businesses several, Jude alone has been involved in nothing less than 20 different startups, building their technology from scratch, helping them scale to 
where they are. I'm also consultant for a lot of startups. So it was more like we know we can do this, right? Um, and the funny thing is, if people don't know your track record, they might guess. But it was more like when we start speaking, people just like, they know they know you guys. Yeah. these guys are onto something. And so it was two different backgrounds. Jude is from the DeFi blockchain background. I'm from the business background. So it's again complementary skills whereby we know we can solve a core problem, even if people might not see it as that. Um, so a lot of things around Silicon Valley is taking a chance. So mm. you hear stories of how Stripe got founded, right? Yes, the, the two brothers have sold a company, but they were just chilling in the sofa. And they went up to Elon Musk saying, I will have built a business that will kill paper. Oh, I have an idea that will disrupt paper. And he looks at them, interesting. And he calls someone and says, Come over to the office, they pitch the idea, they take a chance on them, they write the 500k check on the spot. Look at Stripe today. How many people have been able to take chances like this? A lot of great ideas die because many people do not have people to take chances on them. And the second thing is how many people can we support, right? And so I feel there needs to be a different way we raise, right? And this is what we are trying to do, right? And in three months, we've been able to prove that this is what this works. And people this are interested. And people are interested. Amazing. And so we, of course, know the responsibility of finding the best ideas, right? And so, at the moment, we have thousands, thousands of people who want to raise. But we've been very clear. We know the kind of founders. So you will have the same similar screening process to a typical VC. Yes, we do. We have an investment committee, right? And the good thing about our investment committee is. It's, is a, a 360 degree. It's found made up of founders who are series A and B level. We have also startup founders who are also growing. We have VCs themselves. We have VC analysts. We have PE, investment bankers. We have a multiple group of type of people who see this business from different viewpoints. And that's what works because we're able to agree. And once we all agree on a the business, then it, it's very clear if out of because we have like different six cell man team. If out of four people out of six cells agree that this business makes sense, definitely they are all seeing it from their own point. And we allow the independence of this team choose. So we and that's what we try to assure okay. that we don't we don't give a veto. It is an independent choice. And so we also have been not just only allowing investment, we're trying to help out in training. So we've been doing founder convos um, and talking to a lot of founders. Um, being operational in the sense that, um, in a way, doing pro bono consultancies to some of them um, separately. Um, we're also rolling out programs to help out so how as you, much as possible. How are you co CEOing and co founding? Like, What's the, how have you found the balance? Because now these are two great businesses, two great ideas. One is in early stage, one is in, is a mature stage, but it's literally like you guys are innovating Literal. and bringing new products. So it's, they're two very critical stages and delicate stages and you're at the helm of both, literally. So what's your hack? Teach us. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been asked this quite a lot. So I say it still goes back to me. Um, as I told you, I love doing lots of things. So. Mm -hmm. Um, most people also don't know I started a um, an event thing that I used to do, which is game nights. I did and hosted game nights, and it was big, almost a thousand people. I just stopped it because I was bored. Um, but then it's still going to come back. So I like to do a lot of things. So if you're if you're thinking I'm doing two businesses, what do you think when I'm launching the others? <laughs> how? how you're going to react but so like from what i hear it's like you've built your capacity to be able to manage a yes. lot of things at the same time so i know it's stress right i've spoken to a lot of people with stress but i don't know why for me it's not i it's never been i'm again the kind of person that i don't sleep as much so <laughs> at night 3 a.m i'm awake doing something um i kind of function and so most people are like oh what's your health and i'm like this is how i've been since nine so if I've been like this since age nine, this is me. Maybe it's different, right? So, but I'm saying because this is me, I'm able to handle a lot of different stress. But again, 
I have a solid team. On both ends. On both ends. And so managing a team who again is not just about the business, they are all mission driven. And if you speak, listen to everyone speak, we're all aligned in the same goal. That's why I say it's a yin and yang. Me and him are constantly chatting on WhatsApp or anything around things. Like we can just a hey, two minutes or huddle five seconds and we are literally moving. So it's not been a problem, right? But I've of course said that whenever it gets there, and I've said this anywhere, like once it gets too much to handle, of course I'll step down um, and choose where I will align much better. I mean, again, why most people will feel okay this business is a baby growing because of the kind of team in short three months we're able to scale and so it's everything comes down to the how you manage your team how you manage their, your time and I, I like myself because i know how to manage my time and i give all so in i know this kind of things you hear whereby people will say okay one of them will always pull at you you will only give only 50 percent i'm not that person i give 100 percent and heads. one to all uh, all businesses. But give me Kundera's kind of capacity. Uh-uh. So I can do like five <laughs> startups at once. <laughs> but it's not easy, I won't lie. Um, yeah, I can't imagine. It's not. I would I would try to sugarcoat it. It's <laughs> not easy at all. But again, it's, it's who you it's, are. It's who I am. Amazing. Yeah. So when I asked IBK um, what his biggest lessons has been in the last eight years, and he said, um, keep learning, customer satisfaction, and never give up. Right? Yeah. Um, my final question to you is, Building, doing just so many things that you've done, right? Uh, building principal to where it is right now, building a new company that is doing something entirely different again. What would you say has been like the biggest lesson you've learned that someone else can benefit from? All right. Um, I'll say the biggest lesson is is actually very t- like one. Do not do not second guess yourself. Mm. Right. If you have an idea, and when I say you have an idea and you know in your heart that this idea can't be, go all out. Literally go all out. Push your body, your mind on that idea. For the fact that you are pushing, for the fact that you're persevering, the the universe aligns to you Mm. somehow. Like, it's crazy, but it does, right? And also know what you're getting into i always tell people like business is not starry eyed <laughs> listen to elon musk it is hard yeah. it is really hard so if you are not cut out for it tell yourself the truth but if you do have that idea find someone that can work with you compliment you and just go all out okay. that's all amazing thank you ibk um, ibk any Final, final, final words. Oh, am I sitting in the frame? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thank you, by the way. I don't think I have any final word than saying thank you and thanks to all our customers for trusting us to this age. Yeah. Like, they've, been, uh, they've stuck for a while. Yeah, and our first customer, because we have two set of customers. Yeah. Right? We have first customer who are our internal customer, who are the staffs. Yeah. The mm. people who believe in this dream, mm. and some of them have been with us for five, six years. The people who have been in this company, the people who believe in this dream, and has been able to move from one stage of their career to another within the same company. I want to say thank you to them, and I want to say thank you to the customer who believe in us, who are able to put their money on something they've not seen. Amazing. You get because now you have to pay. Like the, some, if it's we have the B two B and the B two C set. Yeah. So if you are ordering from the our website. platform from the website directly, you have to pay before we can treat your order. No more pay on delivery. No, 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 no. But then, anymore. but then we have the B two B part, who are the bigger guys in the industry. I'm sure people like Google won't go to the website to order from you, right? You send you send out you send out your sales team. Thanks to Ekunda, who <laughs> who was able to set. I mean, a team of call sales department, right? They, they request for somebody to come for a meeting. They give you check or give you, I mean, PO, deliver, I, mean, after, I mean, payment 60 days after delivery or 50 days after, I mean, 30 days after delivery yeah. sometimes. So those parts, 
I say thank you to them because they give us a document that says deliver. And they trust that you will. And they trust us. Amazing. Then you have to deliver quality or else you won't get paid. <laughs> simple as that. And it has to be in millions. Yeah. Or else you won't get paid. So that's, the, that's why I said thanks to the internal customer, right, who helps us to, I mean, to be able to satisfy the external customers. So that's, thanks to everybody. That's and a very good way to do it. Thanks for this it. interview. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching. You got the a two-in-one deal in one video. We're learning about Get Equity and Learning About Principle. Timita Ayan and them. Timita Kwe and Ibuku IBK. Thank you so yeah. much for doing this with me. Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure you don't leave this channel without subscribing and see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank Peace you. Out.